What do you think, Mr. Clerk? We should just start um, since we have a fairly long agenda. Yes, and we have uh, uh, John is here, who's first on the agenda, I guess. Um, yeah, I think we should just skip our minutes and and, and right get started. Then one reason that we decided to spend one hundred fifty dollars to have this recorded is um, so that people can uh, you know review it later. Um, particularly the Mark Westa presentation. John, yours is very good too, don't get me wrong. But <laughs> So, um, as far as I do have a modification to the agenda, I'd like to add the topic of Vernon Dam relicensing as 7A. And it's not a big item, but just to bring everyone up to date. And so let's go right to John with DEC Regional Floodplain Program. Great. Thanks. Thank you, John. Thanks, yeah, you're welcome. And, and thanks, everybody, for, for having me tonight uh, for the uh, maybe important and hopefully important to everybody to conversation about floodplain regulations in Vernon and some of the work that uh, Bob and Wendy and, and Alyssa from the Regional Commission, who's on as well, have been have put into these to date. So I'm going to give a very short, I think, I'm going to try to give a very short presentation. Um, you you would think after 18 months I'd be well versed in Zoom meetings, but not, need, not, not quite yet. Do you need um, to screen share? Um, I'm sorry? Do you need to screen share? I will need to screen share. Okay, I have just made you the co-host, so you Great. should be able uh, to do that. Great, and so it's, it's a few, it's not more than a handful of slides, and it will get us all hopefully on the same playing field so we can have a conversation about the proposed flood regulations that, that Bob and Wendy have put together, and then uh, you know we'll kind of go through there and talk about the map and where you can find the regulations and the maps, and then uh, Alyssa will talk for a few minutes about kind of next steps, how the town proceeds in, in terms of uh, administration of the regulations. So. Right. Perfect. Without without further ado, let's let's try this. Um, I'm going to share my screen. And did that work? Yep. Yep. All right. Here we go. So. Some of this might be old news to you. Flooding is the most common disaster that we have in Vermont. It happens all the time. It happens everywhere. Um, it's not local. Uh, it's not a problem to downtown Montpelier like we see in the photo. It happens up in the islands, you know, and Lake Champlain. It happens uh, to your neighbor to the west. And Guilford has some pretty significant flooding. Um, just this past two weeks ago, there was flooding, you know, in Dummerson, Rockingham. Uh, in Brattleboro, so it's happening all the time. It's happening everywhere. It's caused by rain, snow, ice, debris, all of the above, all at the same time. Uh, when we're talking about flooding, and particularly with the regulations you have for you tonight, we're talking about inundation flooding, so kind of Mississippi River or bathtub style flooding where the water comes up out of the banks and it spills out into the floodplain and it just kind of slowly percolates back down into the ground. Uh, we, we want to care and protect those floodplains because they serve us they serve a number of functions to the community they help to alleviate some of the energy that's in the storm so they dissipate the water during those high water events uh they provide for groundwater recharge as that water is slowly percolating back into the ground you can see a couple of other things there uh, maintaining stream stream equilibrium um, and they take the flat the quote unquote flashiness out of a stream so again, allowing the energy to be dispersed across a wide area. When we're talking about the special flood hazard area and the regulations tonight, we're talking about the areas that have been mapped by FEMA. And there are three distinct zones. And the image on the screen should help to explain some of those. Uh, there's the regular, so if we're looking at the picture on the screen, that dark blue in the center, the, the stream channel, right? Your feet are wet if you're standing in that dark blue. The, the aqua color, the flood way, that's an area where water is moving with conveyance during a flood event, so a high energy area. And then there's the flood fringe, that light blue on either side. Um, and there's a zone A and a zone AE, and we can talk about that in, those in more detail. So that's the 1% chance annual flooding area, or 
what used to be referred to as the 100 year floodplain. There's also a zone X that is not in that picture. That is the 0.2 or 500 year floodplain that is non-regulatory, but something that FEMA does map. So you can see the maps in a couple of different areas. Uh, these are just some screenshots of the floodplain in Vernon. Uh, you can, the picture on the upper right is from the Agency of Natural Resource Atlas. If you just Google ANR Atlas, it'll be the first thing that pops up. And then the picture on the bottom right, same area, that's from the FEMA Map Service Center. Uh, there's also paper maps in the town office. Uh, and these are all showing the same data. They can all be used for regulatory purposes. So FEMA and the National Flood Insurance Program, or the NFIP, are focused on inundation risk. So making sure when it floods, because it will flood, your homes and your structures are built to withstand those flood events. So in the picture we have on the screen, that red line represents the base flood elevation. So this home, yes, surrounded by flood water, but after the flood waters recede, people can go back into their home. They're gonna have a mess, they're gonna to have to muck out, but they have a home there to go back into. I'm going to come back to that one. We also have erosion hazard flooding that we're not talking about tonight, though, but it does happen in Vermont. So unlike the picture before where those folks could go back into their house and muck out, these folks cannot go back into their house and muck out. Um, there, is no, there, there is no house left to go to. Um, towns in, in should plan for increased flooding because we're seeing a change in how to us. Uh, it's probably evident to you this summer. Um, so the National Climate Assessment says that we should expect to see a 71% increase in, in the rainfall, in the 71% increase in heavy rainfall uh, events. So we're not getting more rain, we're just getting more intense, shorter rainstorms, like what we had a couple of weeks ago. Um, I think it was a Friday night. You know, so it's, it's, it's not a, a half an inch every day for a week in June, it's three inches at a time over six hours. And that's where we're seeing these kind of large scale flooding events happening. There's a benefit to the town to Vernon to having flood regulations as through the emergency relief and assistance fund. When there's a big disaster, FEMA comes in and says, we're going to give you 75% of the money that the state can kick in 12 and half percent. And then Vernon's on the hook for the other 12 and half percent. Um, if you kind of go above and beyond, you can get up to 17.5% um, payment from the state, which lowers your local cost share down. And I'm going to come back to this slide now to talk about the proposed standards that are in the flood regulations that, that the town has worked on. And these are will be a change from what Vernon has currently. So, so I just picked some of the highlights that I think would be warranted to talk about. So new structures in the flood hazard area so outside the floodway have to have the lowest floor two feet above the base flood elevation so so right now you have one foot you're raising that to two feet it's great it, it increases the safety and resiliency of the community uh small accessory structures don't need to be elevated so garden sheds things like that just adequately anchored and, and built to the all development standards which we can talk about so so you're not going to have to 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 go through, to jump through a lot of hoops to build a, a garden shed or some other accessory structure. Uh, new critical facilities are prohibited, which is, is great. You know, we see a lot of fire departments throughout the state that are in the flood hazard area or the floodway sometimes. Um, new accessory structures are prohibited in the floodway, so no garden sheds in the floodway. Uh, <laughs> and not just garden sheds. And then one of the big ones is new development shall not decrease the flood storage capacity. So essentially, if you bring in two dump trucks of fill to level out your, your ground to build a new house on, you then somehow have to excavate or um, create that same amount of flood storage volume. So two dump trucks come in, two dump trucks have to leave. Kind of a, so it's, so it's a no net loss. So that was very quick. And I threw a lot of information at the board, and if there's folks in the audience there. Well, if I could jump, jump in here, I've been, been working on this. Uh, Wendy yeah. Harrison, our interim town uh, administrator, as well as um, Tim Arsenal, who is the town's um, flood hazard officer. Um, we've worked with Alyssa 
and then now with John to come up with a draft regulation. And the purpose of tonight's meeting is to see if the Planning Commission will vote to recommend this draft to, um, to the Select Board to implement. And there are certain public hearing requirements, et cetera, for that. So we actually have a draft, um, which I don't think has been distributed to the Planning Commission, right, John? We don't have a final? Sorry, correct. I don't believe there's a final draft been, yet been done. But right. uh, from what we talked about, Bob, there shouldn't be too many substantive changes from what, from what you and Wendy and I discussed and what you were working with Alyssa. Okay. So one of the things Alyssa did for us is if she could jump in here and just highlight how much flood damage Vernon has experienced to kind of give it perspective on Vernon's need for flood protection. Um, so if you're just speaking about NFIP claims. Right. Yeah, that's less than $1,100 um, since you were a member, which I believe was 1991, <laughs> so not much. But, um, cause that's very low in comparison to other towns in the area. Um, however, um, as I've said to Bob and Wendy before, just because of that um, doesn't mean that, it could mean that there is more people that should have flood insurance than do. So people um, may be experiencing flood damages but don't have coverage and so that damage wouldn't be reflected in that number. Um, so I don't think that, you know, you should say, well, it might not be necessary just because of that $1,100 number, but... Um, Which I wasn't saying. Yeah, um, yeah, but that might, it, it might lead some people to believe that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. The other thing is that um, we need to, as a town, to maintain the eligibility for the flood insurance program, update our bylaw. So this is not an option, really, for the town. I mean, the option is to not update it, and then we'd be kicked out of the flood insurance program. Correct? Potentially. There are so there are. I'll jump in. There are new maps that are coming across the state, and as a part of that new map, that map update process, uh, you will be required to either to most likely. I haven't looked at the old Vernon bylaws in great detail. Uh, adopts either some some small sections of it or or new bylaws as a whole, and that's what many communities choose to do. They take the opportunity when FEMA comes to town to do the mapping to to revisit what their bylaws say and the standards that are being addressed throughout the town. And then the other thing to point out to our planning commission here is that um, there we had another model to evaluate, which we did, which Wyndham Regional Commission puts together, and they can customize it even further. But there's this agency of natural resource model that John has provided us. Well, Alyssa gave it to us too, but John's worked with us to, to fine tune it. So Vernon is 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 going to be, if this is implemented, using a state agency approved model, which use incorporates all the federal definitions, et cetera, extensive definitions if you see the, the ordinance. Um, and it's kind of a lot of redundant things if you read it, but um, as we reviewed it, it's basically required to, to be in our bylaw. So I, I don't know if we, I'd like to open it up to questions. Um, so I, I don't suppose the situation changes from the old regulations to the new regulations, but, but who is um, responsible for enforcing uh this new hazard bylaw once we adopt it well we will and this is written in the bylaw we will create um and that should be part of our recommendation tonight if we want to act on it tonight we may not um it's a vernon what did we call it john and Alyssa? you, you called it a, a flood hazard review board so so there are there's two components you have to have a, a local floodplain administrator um for those kind of permittable projects, and then for anything that requires a conditional use permit, you have to have some sort of board, uh, regulatory body to issue to review those permit applications. 
Um, and yeah, that's something that Vernon is going to have to, to, to work to create because I don't think it, it has existed in years past. Right. So, so there's a board, there's a floodplain plane administrator, um, but you know, and, and obviously big, big projects like, uh, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, new critical facilities would, would, would come to that kind of body. But, you know, somebody uh, wants to put a shed in their backyard or, or whatever, you know, the, the, the mantra in Vernon is we don't have zoning and you can do whatever you want. So they're not going to go ask. So, so how does that kind of stuff get dealt with? It's a, it's a great question. I think it's going to, it's at least initially, um, it's going to be a little bit of work, uh, you know, for other communities that don't have zoning, they, they do some relatively simple things like send a postcard out with folks tax bill, like, Hey, don't forget, we have floodplain regulations, you know, and, and when a regional, uh, can, can tag and create a list of E911 addresses that have floodplain, um, issues on the property. Uh, so there's, there's simple things like that. There's also the kind of just getting the word out, being present in the community. Um, you know, whoever is appointed as the floodplain administrator needs to, to be aware that it, you know, I tell folks that it, to be, to be an effective floodplain administrator, you have to, to take a drive around the town every once in a while to see what's happening. You know, you want to catch those garden sheds from going in or you want to catch them while they're being constructed just in case they, they need to move it or, or you know, use the materials, etc. So, um, but the, the short answer is it's going to be a little bit of work for the first, you know, 12 months or 18 months for whoever fills that role. Yeah, uh, Alyssa had made strong recommendation that we have a, um, an initial public um, education outreach to inform people of this. So the Vernon News and um, select board meetings talking about it. There could even be um, flyers posted. Yeah, just you put a map, or we'll have the map easily available for folks to look out at the town office, um, so that they, when the, you know, they can just come in and and check if they're if they need help finding that out, and then just having signs up to advertising they need to get a permit and if you're in the floodplain at the town office too. Um, there are other ways to advertise that. Okay, and what are the steps for actually adopting these regulations? Is somebody mentioned a hearing? Do you want to go on about that, John? Uh, sure. <laughs> sure. So I was just waiting to see if you wanted to answer. Uh, so the, I don't know if this was warned as a public hearing. There's a planning commission public hearing. Planning commission provides a written report. They pass it on to the select board. The select board says, they warn a public hearing, um, and then the, at, that, at that select board public hearing, they adopt it. I, there's some noticing requirements that go with each of those. Excuse me, I think it's 15 days for each one, but uh, please don't quote me on that. Uh, it's pretty easy to find in, in Title 24 of the state statute. Um, and, and I can also send it to Bob and Wendy if, if you know, after the meeting, just for clarity. Okay, but right now we don't have the final text yet. Is that right? Correct. I think right. This was informational, is my understanding, right, yeah. Bob? Okay. So, so and we don't have a quorum, so we can't vote anyway. So, yeah. So um, basically, we'll we'll have it, to be. And I also, I also, um, we we were working right up to the last minute on this last week. We need. I'd like to see it, the draft distributed to the planning commission for everyone to at least have a chance to review it before um, we. I have vote a question. On. There's no okay. urgency here. Um, I mean, we could take our September meeting to do this. So that's... You, yeah, yeah, another thing to consider is that um, who will serve as the floodplain administrator and who will serve on the floodplain review board because at the same time as you're putting your new bylaw, adopting a new bylaw, you would have to also have those positions appointed because you can't have uh, a bylaw in place without having... Um, those positions filled. So, um, did you have any any further thoughts on that to share with anyone, Bob? I know we spoke about it at our meeting a couple of weeks ago. 
Um, no, I thought thought that would be something we just discuss with the select board. We'd have a joint, you know, public hearing. And um, but I we've sort of talked about it. We could have a couple members from the. I think you have to have four. Is that it, John or Alyssa? Minimum. It's a minimum of three, I think. Three to three. nine. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I I was thinking we could if we had three from the planning commission that wanted to or two and one from the select board and they don't have to be from a town board either they could be an at large citizen right yes yeah so mm -hmm. i think we're we're i think tonight what we you've done is good you've given us an overview next steps we need to get the final draft circulated to the planning commission and the select board and and then identify with wendy's help the procedural requirements for adoption get that in place but yeah. i'd like to have the planning commission have its public hearing at our next meeting which is september 8th i believe yes uh bob maddie has a question um this is the agency of natural resources program this is a model bylaw that that dec came up with to help communities such as vernon Okay, I okay. was I was just wondering what is uh, how are pre-existing conditions handled in this case, especially if it's a home. So, well, so the the I, if I'm understanding you correctly, if your question correctly, Maddie, you're saying if I own a house in the flood hazard area and I want to do some renovations or a, an addition to it, correct? No, I mean, how how does it, how are you treated with your home? I mean, do you, but you are they going to mandate violation that you, already? Are they going to mandate that you move your home? No, no, no. The only thing that would happen is if you're if you have an existing house in the flood hazard area, um, you would have to get a permit to do work, um, and then the big trigger would be what's called a substantial improvement. So if you're doing more than fifty percent of the fair market value in improvements, um, you know, adding another story, for example, the whole structure would have to be brought into compliance. Um, but for for folks who, who have no plans to do anything, uh, nothing changes. And they would still be permitted to buy flood insurance? Yes. Yes. If, if sorry, not to belabor the point, if, if the town chooses to do nothing and chooses to not participate in the flood insurance program, that's when folks could lose the ability to buy flood insurance through the National Flood Insurance Program. They don't have to go to a private market. Thank you. Are there any other questions or any discussion from the, the members or the public? Okay, so why don't we uh, close this agenda item and thank you john and Alyssa. and we have we'll we'll regroup um with wendy um probably next week and Great. and um, she couldn't be here she might jump in later she had another meeting so and thank you all right thanks everybody and bob's will be in touch all right. So, um, Roger is supposedly going to be uh, coming back soon from wherever he is. So, we just need one more, right, Martin? We do. Okay. Um, and Chad may well show up. So, I think. Um, Mark, Mark Weston with Stevenson Associates. You're really the featured agenda item tonight. Well, here comes uh, Chad, so we're um, gonna have a quorum, Martin. Yep. Let's just wait till Chad shows up. I, he's probably on the phone. Chad, are you there? He's not showing up as muted, but 
appears to be getting there. Why don't you go ahead, Bob? Sure, Mark. Should I go ahead? Yep. Okay. Yes, please. Well, thank you for having me again. Um, I think we're getting near the conclusion of this project, so I'm going to share my screen a bit. Can everybody see that? Maybe I should shove it over a little more. Huh? So I just wanted to spend a little bit of time just kind of stepping through the process we took. Uh, I don't want to belabor it, but I think it's good to just kind of record where we're at and, and where we're headed. Um, so this was from our proposal. Uh, we worked through kind of a project kickoff, including a site visit, which was very helpful. We've kind of evaluated the site just generally and also looked at things like the utilities on the site, you know, kind of at a broad brush level. Um, we've looked at sort of redevelopment potential and developed a number of alternatives, um, looked at recreation. We did hold the community meeting and got community input, um, worked to refine some scenarios, and now we're sort of at the final maps and, and next steps. So I guess I'm hoping at this point the map is pretty well set and we're kind of looking towards um, wrapping up a report that's appropriate for the project. I know in the schedule, um, the original request was that the project was would be completed by the end of August, so we should be able to wrap that up, or I think that was mostly so we could meet a deadline into September. Um, I'm happy to talk about the specifics of that when, when we get near the end. Um, so just to kind of think about where we've been, we did look at a whole series of options. I've rotated this map from the way we've shown it before, um, but you can see this is option A, and we did work through, I'll just zoom in on this a little bit, um, just to give people the idea that we've looked at a range of things, including housing, um, solar uses, um, but we've also done this in several different ways. We've looked at making it a fairly wooded area, um, with the industrial line, the rail yard. We've looked at um, keeping farm, the farming going, um, different ways to look with the, at the Velco site. So um, we've looked at ideas like a power museum. Um, so th there was kind of a whole range of ideas here. Just kind of wanted to put that out there. Um, and we also had the public meeting where we tried to get input in a number of ways. This was one of the ways, this kind of picture board where people voted. We also had people vote on the map. And the results of that, I can kind of share here. Uh, you know, really basically, there were four different aspects of uses that were strongly supported, including industrial uses, alternative energy use, keeping the farming, and river access. And I think you'll see that those continued into our final plan quite a bit. And there were also a number of um, other uses that were, you know, mildly supported or moderately supported, including conservation uses, recreation, some sort of village or addition to the kind of the village plan that's already going on in place, um, looking at the Abenaki culture and heritage and, and doing some things to accommodate um, their kind of edu educational efforts a community space, a community green space, um, and really looking at more kind of land restoration, really letting the land kind of, you know, come back to the way it used to be. Some of the other ideas, like I mentioned, were sort of a science and research center, an indigenous persons museum, an eco or ecology related museum, a power related museum, and a power related education center. So all those were you know, kind of on those boards or, or being discussed, and, and this kind of breaks down how the voting went. Um, after that, from that meeting and from those earlier ideas, we sort of generated this sketch level um, drawing that recorded, you know, some of the main ideas about what we were trying to do. And these included, you know, more or less keeping the farm and farming in place, doing some infill, 
along the street and possibly a bit of a village idea. Um, this is across from the school and also it ties into that village plan that's out there. Uh, we looked at a heritage trail, interpretive trail that might you know, look at the Abenaki culture and other heritage items that have been on the site. Um, we've looked at sort of solar array around the Isfisi, uh, mostly because that land is you know, somewhat difficult to use and you know, there might uh, be requirements that this area doesn't have a lot of people in it. So some sort of use um, where people wouldn't have to be there all the time made good sense. Providing good river access um, is, is a real interest. And then down at the south end, really, you know, looking at some industrial uses that could take advantage of the rail line um, and some of the site access, the, the driveway that goes past the Governor Hunt House currently is quite adequate, adequate for many uses. And then, you know, kind of to the south end, sort of a recreational area. Um, we did have, we put that out, we did get receive some comments um, and some good ideas feedback related to it and from that we really started to develop you know what well, you also have the battery storage in there. oh yeah thank you thank you Martin. um so the battery storage up here near the velco site um so i think you can see how all of those came you know from some of the earlier plans and from sort of the voting and public input that we got um so we moved ahead and and kind of created this these plans and there's a couple different versions of this um, that I'm going to show you. This one um, doesn't have a lot of background to it. The other one does. So um, maybe I'll maybe I'll just kind of show you this one fairly quickly and then jump to the next one um, because you, you you can tell me if on screen either is easier to see or or clearer. But the way we lay this out, um, we have this underlay of the aerial imagery and the topography and the site, uh, site boundary line. So we can kind of sh you know, see, see through it a bit. Um, but this really just takes the same idea that was um, in that earlier plan and fills it out a little bit. Um, probably the biggest thing is we did reduce the solar array a bit. Uh, that allowed us to provide some more buffer around the edge of it. Um, and especially down near the sort of water access boat launch area, really providing a bit of a buffer separating those. So I'll, maybe I'll zoom in a little bit here and just move around the site. Um, so uh, up at the north end, you can see the farming kind of still remaining, the Velco site, uh, the main one, the newer one still there. This plan does kind of reduce or, or take out the, some of the older Velco sites, obviously, We'd have to, you know, confirm that. But the idea is possibly that they could kind of consolidate, um, continue to co consolidate those uses. The battery storage is up here. There's this woodland buffer, and you can see the trail system that we're suggesting up here. Um, some of this land is Great River Hydro right along the property, so access, you know, would would be had to, you know, work out with them. That could be. Part of the discussion with the relicensing, um, but I think just conceptually it makes good sense to think about trying to get along the top of that bank and maybe even down in towards the river a little bit. Um, you can see this red here is the S50, and that's where the the dry casts are being stored, and then kind of providing a, a decent separation there. If more, you know, is needed for security reasons. Obviously, that would reduce the amount of um, solar that is allowed there, but we are showing almost 16 acres of solar, so quite a bit of land area. Um, if that needed to be reduced, that, that would make good sense. Uh, along Governor Hunt Drive Road, the um, showing this housing infill, six lots, just kind of in where there currently aren't houses and then sort of this village layout um, that would provide 18 houses or 18 house sites um, continuing access into the governor hunt house you know kind of through the main driveway connecting the recreational trail to the school so that you know the idea would be students could 
uh, be supervised and cross the street and, and go on a, a field trip with their teachers or something along that line. Um, one thing I would point out that are noted here in several cases are the kind of the wells. So those are these blue dots. Um, those could be, you know, they provide a, a substantial amount of water and could be reused for housing uses or, or some level of industrial uses, not for heavy water uses, but certainly, you know, to manage the facilities. And then down at the south end here is the large septic field. Um, that could be used um, for lots of uses. Again, not for really heavy industrial use, but more domestic level. Um, certainly that's available. And the rail line that continues in, and we're showing that kind of at the back side of this industrial development. One of the buildings really having a back door right onto it, and then possibly the other um, other uh, industrial play facilities having some access to it by vehicle. Um, there's there is space along this area where you could load and unload and, and things like that. So this southern end becomes you know fairly heavy in industrial uses um, and it becomes a very nice sort of um, waterfront access area. So if we zoom in a little more on that, I'll just, you know, we're showing sort of an area where a road can come in. Um, there could be a boat launch, plenty of room to, to put in quite a few cars, a, a possibly a picnic and a viewpoint, possibly a small beach area. This is currently the outfall of the um, nuclear facility, so um, it will be removed in the decommissioning process, and it, it's a good chance to sort of look at that and see if it could be graded in a way to really accommodate, you know, boat access and a dock and you know some some level of rooftop carrying down. Um, it, it really seems like a, a good spot for that, and then down below. The trail continues from above and it works along sort of the property line and it could become sort of the southern end could be very much sort of an open recreational area. Not a lot can be done right on the septic field, but it could be used for, you know, continued kind of open space recreation. There could be sort of a picnic area or viewpoint looking off to the to the south and southeast. Um, so really there's a, a lot of um, opportunities to mix a, a, a bunch of different uses, the, the housing, the industrial, the kind of recreational aspects, and then the, the power aspects. So I think that's um, really the focus of what I wanted to do, other than, you know, definitely have a discussion and answer questions and um, anything like that. Well, I just wanted to point out um, that this plan has more detail about the river recreation access and some of the picnic areas than the earlier, which we asked them to put a little effort into that. So thank you, Mark. Yeah, um, I don't actually have, well, I could open it. I did I did do an enlargement of it. It's, it's really not a whole lot different than if I just keep zooming in on this, um, but you can, you can see that we've we've thought about almost to the level of where some parking spaces would be, how trailer movement would be, um, where some rooftop access would be, things like that. So, um, and and one of the nice things about how we did this, uh, which was quite a bit of a sort of in CAD form, is you can continue to zoom in and add detail, and um, you know, look at it in detail. We could also do things like turn off. The color layers and see exactly what's going on in the aerial below it very easily. So, if that helps people kind of get their reference um, in the future, that that would be really uh, something pretty easy to do. So let's just ask, open it up for questions from anyone. Um, Mark. Yeah. I um, looking at this. I'm just wondering. Do you think that? there might be enough room to uh, parallel another exit for um, heavy trucks out through here rather than everything going up and down Governor Hunt Road that that might be more of an industrial 
Yeah, we we did look at that a bit, and there's there is room to do that. The, I think the issue is that using the existing facilities would be fairly low cost, and building that heavy kind of road that would have quite a bit of length to it would be, fair, you know, fairly well, I was, expensive. I, yeah, I was just thinking, you know, to minimize, especially if this is the industrial area, to minimize the heavy traffic going near this housing and the school. The school, yeah. But that that could be actually looked at at a later time, that there is enough room there. There is, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, you know, I've thought about that, and, and I've been hanging out at the Governor Hunt House doing various things, and I notice, you know, there's a fair number, every time I'm there, there's trucks going in and out of there. But it's not to the point where it's really, you know, well, disturbing the neighborhood. Well, no, not now. So, but I, as I said, if this is indeed industrial, you don't know. You know, what if it was a FedEx terminal? Well, uh, yeah, obviously. Yeah. And so, I mean, this is one of the things that the town then would would want to to know what's what's going to be happening there, and, and then design. Yeah, but I just um, all I wanted to know is if he thought there was enough room to yeah, parallel it, that. It, it could be, and yeah. so that's an option. Mm -hmm. Could parallel the the railroad track and exit yep. at the northern end. Yeah, I think we had one where it was actually cutting across the end of the farm field and kind of squaring into Governor Hunt down, but farther down. Closer, so that, closer yeah, to Route One Forty Two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And I think, you know, if it was a user that had a lot of truck traffic, they, you know, that would almost be part of their mindset of, of how they access. They need a good road, and they're used to... Well, they might ask for that. They might even ask for it, exactly. They might, they might well, not want well, to. Well, the state, I mean, anything there is going to be subject to Act 250. Right. So in that, in that is where you'd have a review of well, how many trucks per day, et cetera, and uh, you, whether you know the existing entrance is acceptable or whether they should. Well, the the track, the railroad track, actually, does it skirt the wetlands, or does it actually go over it? Well, in effect, it goes over it because it's it's an, sort of an embankment that has, you know, obliterated any wetlands. Right, right, right. Okay. So it, yeah, it kind of just goes over them, if you will. All right, it's, it's just an option that would be available. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mark, this is Bob. Isn't there an earlier draft that showed at least one other septic field or are they still shown on here i saw the southern one i i did not show them um but there are a number of other septic fields that we could show it was just getting a little graphically confusing um so i was trying to be clear but yes there are there are a number of small septic fields there's actually there's a few right up in this well, area there's I one think that that would be good if you just used a dot or something, you know, yeah. like you did the wells. Yeah. Because those would have to be kept clear. You wouldn't be able to have it treed. If they were going to be kept in place and functional, yes. Right. Definitely. Yeah. And and that's something the town can officially request from North Star to leave. So it'd be nice to have that on the map. Mm hmm I was kind of wondering, you know, as we wrap this up, if there is, you know, all, almost all this information is just in the computer and it can almost be sorted out in different ways. So maybe there is a, a map that almost says, please, here are the facilities we would like to have remain, or, you know, or something along that line. Well, I was going to bring up this point, is that, you know, we have that uh, MOU with North Star that has a list of things. It's just a list of things that we can uh, request to be preserved right now, um, and, and there's not even a you know requirement that if we give them a list that they preserve those because they might have reasons why that can't happen. But but you know it, it seems to me that on the basis of all of this, this whole study as well as the Antioch uh, work that was done last year mostly. Um, and you know, and given the fact that that North Star supported all of this, they they paid for the Antioch work. That this kind of opens the door now to have more nitty-gritty discussions 
with North Star to say, okay, can we discuss this list now mm -hmm. and, and, and preserve things that are um, uh, consistent with this plan and including, you know, for example, when you deconstruct that um, water outfall, it's called, uh, you know, when that's taken down, they're, they're going to have to kind of dig a slope down to it to, to, to you know, demolish it. To anyway. do it, yeah. yeah. So in a way, they will be doing the grading that would be necessary for a boat launch there. So that gives us an opportunity to talk about when you do that, you know, leave that grading in place. You don't have to create the parking lot, but, but leave it in such a way that it's consistent with that use sometime in the future. Right. Um, so I think that's, I think this is very useful in, in sort of in having the next, in figuring out what our next steps are. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I mean, I, I really, I really like this plan. Uh, it, it happens that this afternoon, uh, this morning, Maddie and I had a <laughs> Zoom meeting with a researcher in France who is doing, it's part of a big three-year study on the geography in, of land uses around nuclear power plants. Huh. Because in France they have lots of nuclear power plants, but they're interested in in us, and um, and she was very interested in this in this plan and in the fact that um, you know this is this is really kind of an unusual situation in the United States, where most of the time when a plant gets decommissioned, it's a fifteen hundred acres of of uh, green fields and woods, and, and nothing happens there. Uh, the fact that there's always been houses and a school as close to the um, to the power plant as we have here is very very unusual, mm. and um, so it, 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 uh, you know the whole opportunity is is new and different um, with regard to to at least nuclear power plants in the northeast, and and I I. I, I really like that we've taken a relatively small site here um, and been able to, to squeeze in, you know, such a diversity of uses from recreation to industrial um, to residential, you know. And not that all of this is probably actually going to develop just like this. But what we show is that there's a lot of flexibility in how this site can be used down the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a it's a nice job, um, and I I I don't know if we need to take a formal action, which we can't really, anyways. I don't know. Have we confirmed? Is Chad on? I am on. Well, sure. Thank you for zooming in from the wilderness. <laughs> uh, one thing I did want to add is uh, from the last select board meeting when I was reading about uh, um, Green Mountain or not, uh, okay. uh, Great River Hydro. Uh, and the things that they need to do, it might be something we can think about having them help out with some of the recreational area uh, when we renew their contract. Yeah, I think adding comments to their relicensing application related to this plan makes really good sense. Uh, yeah, good idea. We're gonna you we added an agenda item coming up shortly, Chad, on the relicensing. Okay. No, I just wanted to bring that up because that's something we should definitely think about, um, especially as we look at the different options here and the fact that they nigged on a lot of the things they were supposed to do. It, it's something we should definitely jump on. Yep. So, Mark, our, um, is that Roger? I feel that we're ready to have you wrap this up. Yeah. Do you have any? 
direction other than what's in the proposal? Well, in terms of a written report, what are we going to have to go with this? I mean, my idea is that I kind of recap the process and some of the decisions that were made and, you know, kind of capture in words more or less what I just said, you know, yeah, and, and, and some... I think that's, that's all we need, really. Yeah. And, and I know you, at one point you asked a little bit about some of the dollars. Um, I've looked into, the, you know, some of that a little bit. There's a couple things like the battery storage. I'm not sure if, about the value. Um, I don't know if anybody has better information, but... No. Um, one thing about this overall process is this is an evolving concept. So this plan is a snapshot of what we came up with today, but four years from now, there may be a proposal from someone, some company to do something different, and it could be, you know, this added to this or modified. So um, it's it's not a a plan that's like a town plan mm -hmm. that has legal um, ramifications. Yeah. Would you agree with that, Mark? Definitely, yeah. Well, maybe you could just point that out because we do have a town plan and we have you know town maps and and. This was done independent of the town plan. Yeah, I think I think this mostly can kind of elaborate on the thought process and how we came to this result and how it, you know, what it what it does depict about you know sort of like the mix of uses that people like, but also talk a little bit about how that doesn't mean that there's not flexibility or it won't evolve. Well, sounds like a good next step and. You could wrap it up uh, as soon as you are able to. All right. Do you know if there is a specific deadline? I mean, we talked we, about August. But. We have a the absolute drop dead to file our report with the state by September 30th. Okay. And right. we, you know, that's already you know was extended from last year. So, so we don't want to we don't want to get cut it too close right. either. So, you know, end of August would be great if that's possible. Yeah, for the draft or whatever, and yeah. maybe get a few comments and just wrap it up. Yeah, because yeah. then we can do our filing during the month of September. Okay. Yeah. That's great. And, and just Otherwise, so everyone knows, the paid, select board is, is, <laughs> has been overseeing the payment, well, through Wendy's work. I review the invoices, and the select board voted at their last meeting to essentially take some money out of the professional services until we get reimbursed from the state um, for this work. Yeah. Any other comments or questions on this excellent work? Okay, well, thank you, Mark. Good job. All right, thank you very much. All right. Um, it's a very nice plan. Yeah. Oh, uh, we're gonna, we're I would just talk mention a little bit about some other planning work, Mark. If you want to listen, you're welcome to. I was um, just going to mention that I have handouts if people want them. So, yeah, I'll leave some here too. Yep, please, please do. But can you? Are they um, things you could send around? Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to send the files, but I also just have paper paper versions. Oh, okay. That's all. Yeah, yeah just leave them on the select board. So. And if you could email it to me, okay. I'll distribute them. Um, <clears throat> well, moving on the agenda here, um, I'd like to go, uh, first of all, the next item was to discuss the next municipal planning grant opportunity with Seth Dio from the Vernon Rec. And I don't think Seth is signed in. No, uh, Seth Bob. is sitting right here. I'm, I'm here. I can there see you, Bob. Oh, Seth, I can't. I didn't see the audience. Hi, Seth. Hello. <clears throat> there he is. Oh, okay. You had the mask. Yeah. 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 I need. You know, we got to think about that. Yeah. Scanning yeah. the audience, the audience uh, BCTV. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, what I'd like to do, though, since we do have a quorum, is is take up the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. It's really our only needed action. 
Does someone want to make a motion to approve the minutes um, of our motion uh, to approve the July minutes? Meeting? Motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second. Okay. I wrote them, but I'll second it. Is there any discussion of the minutes? They were very good, Martin. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you. Um, so let's go right, Seth. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. We have spent some time discussing uh, Martin and Seth and I and Wendy, some things we might do with the next round of municipal planning grant money. Uh, I think we feel we've done enough in terms of the town um, center and the VY site. And now we're looking at perhaps some other areas like recreation. And Seth, why don't you just explain some of the things we've discussed? Ah, well, I mean, I think that actually some of the things that we have talked about, Mark just presented in, in the con in the concepts here. Um, I mean, the the boat launch and the river access is something that I think that the community desperately uh, would like above the dam. That's just something that we don't currently have. And anytime we have any um, long-term planning or, or we're reaching out with community out, outreach, you know, looking to see what people would like uh, from the department long-term, um, that's something that comes up continuously, um, is, is access above the, uh, above the dam, uh, as well as um, it, we have an, an, an impressive trail system here in town. Um, sometimes uh, tying it all together is, is something that people would like to see uh, that take place. Um, and I'm sure that there are, are and I mean, I know that the, the VAST has a great trail mapping system, but there's lots of trails and things that are not VAST trails. Um, you know, we have the town forests that we do have, you know, trails and things that are mapped, um, but that's only, again, a small portion of even the town forest. Um, so um, a, a, larger, uh, a larger mapping system that kind of ties everything together, um, I think people would uh, appreciate. And now whether or not that's, in, 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 uh, you know, seasonal or all season um, trails. Um, uh, you know, I think that uh, there's a fair amount of folks in town that, you know, ride mountain bikes and such and would be happy to work uh, on trail maintenance that could help if they were, you know, access fast trails more. They could help cleaning of brush and things in the summertime so that the vast trails would not be um, needing as much work once, you know, their season opens. So those are kind of some things that people have brought up to me. Um, how that works into a planning grant per se, you guys are the experts there. I will defer to you on some of that. Um, but those are, that's the bottom line of, of some of the things we've talked about wanting to do. How we get there um, is, is where we're at right now, I guess. If that makes any sense. Yes, it does. Um, I see Roger's with us. Hi, Roger. Hi, Roger. <laughs> Sorry. Um, if I could just um, to, to tack on to what um, Seth said, and, and I, I sent around um, uh, back in July, um, you know, a, a little information about this grant opportunity. Um, it is a planning grant, mm -hmm. but there are a few other things that can be paid for, for under this, one of which is to purchase development rights, easements, and titles of properties for housing and conservation purposes identified in the municipal plan. Now, I don't know exactly what we have identified in the municipal plan regarding uh, trails and such, but you know that is that is uh, one allowable um, uh, expense under these grants that isn't really planning. the The rest of it is pretty much you know planning activities, uh, expenses for public meetings and hearings, research, data collection, capacity stories, inventories, and mapping, uh, consultants, interns, regional planning commission staff, legal fees. Uh, materials needed to produce a plan, uh, etc. 
So, um, you know, it, 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 it really can't be used, for example, to, you know, pay people to cut a new trail through the woods from here to there. Sure. Um, but it could it could map out that trail. Mm -hmm. It could it could hold um, uh, informational sessions to see really you know what do people want? Do they really want trails or do they want a dirt biking track somewhere? Mm -hmm. Or I think you mentioned um, some kind of circuit at the. Uh, we had talked about a pump track at one point whatever, a few years back. Which whatever is, that is. Yeah. Well, it's kind of was news to me at the time too. Um, it's a. a um, more of like for BMX type riding and such. It's different types of. Uh, and honestly, I, I'm I'm probably butchering this. I know I am because I don't ride and don't have the terminology. Um, but you know, it's it's generally speaking, you know, it can be circular. It may not be circular, but different, you know, different tricks and different aspects and different areas that they can ride through a through a course. Um, and that's something we had talked about a little bit, but it was I mean, in its infancy stages. It was kind of just something, hey, one of these days, um, if we could put something like that together, I bet it would get used a great deal. Yeah. Yep. So this money could, could, could look at, you know, how much interest is there in that, um, you know, how much space does it take, where could it go, is it compatible with other things, um, et cetera. Um, but so, you know, to me it feels like uh, we really could think about doing kind of a recreation master plan that looks at everything from boating and fishing and swimming in the river to uh, trails and, and, and bikes and cycling uh, to, you know, what's, what's the status of our rec center? You know, does it have major capital needs or are there other you know besides what's there or is there room for other other facilities that okay. we could think about doing what whatever it may be you know take a really comprehensive look at um recreation in the in the town that that seems to me to be an opportunity okay good morning Seth. this is chad yeah Hey, is there any way we could pull some of these ideas, like set up, like put some ideas on a clipboard or something, put it at the rec center or, you know, some locations throughout the town where people uh, visit frequently and just give their thoughts, um, you know, on different things uh, people around the town would like to see. Um, you know, I'm sure the years have changed, the people, the audience within the town has changed so maybe some of the ideas have changed but you know maybe we can put a poll out so that we can see you know what, what the current generation wants to see and chad you make a, a really good point i mean i think that if you had asked me five years ago if we would have had a disc golf course i would have said what is disc golf <laughs> you know so um ideas and needs certainly change um with one of the things that we have uh, been brought to our attention with, with COVID is just the need to diversify um, you know, different offerings, you know, and we were kind of, um, you know, when, when March hit in 2020, it was like, oh boy, now what, you know, and uh, it, 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 there were silver linings. It gave us an opportunities to look at some things from a different angle, um, and it's been beneficial in that regard, whether or not it's in, improving trail systems or, or, or outdoor recreation, um, the disc golf course, just, just different opportunities that have come um, from that, from looking at things differently than we used to. So um, as the clientele per se changes in town, certainly looking at things differently is there's real value there. Yeah, this is Bob. I, I um, agree completely with Seth. The, the, in fact, if you haven't, anyone hasn't been up to the town forest trail system, and this has been work that the rec department, Seth and crew have done over the last two years, it's absolutely amazing with the transformation they've made with trails and signage, picnic benches, um, and it gets a lot more use. I don't know if there's been any trail counters installed up there to document use. There was, um, and Jeff, Jeff, uh, I believe Nugent would, I believe he has some of that data. Um, there, there was, and I, I I'm you, throwing I Jeff under the did. bus if I'm wrong, but. <laughs> Um, Man, but but people were using them a lot more during the past eighteen months. Correct. Uh, 
I mean, it's a combination of the, sale, the trails being well marked and a kiosk and maps, making it um, more user friendly. And then the other part that Seth mentioned is, is developing trail linkages. Uh, for instance, to go from the town forest down to the Roaring Book Gorge, um, there's no map that shows you how to do that. There's potential to link over into Massachusetts trail systems at the, at the um, Satan's Kingdom Wildlife Management Area. And as Seth mentioned, the town forest trails only cover a very small portion of the overall town forest. So, and I, I think you could connect to the uh, Lily's Pasture. The potential right? to, to right. make these regional linkages. Yeah. Um, could I ask, uh, you know, since we have a, an actual planning professional sitting over here, <laughs> can I put him on the spot and say, you know, does this notion of a recreation master plan, does it, uh, does it make sense to you or do you have any other thoughts on, on that? Yeah, um, I've seen them done quite a bit. Often they get down to sort of like how many ball fields you have and what's the quality of them, but it could easily be you know, focus on trail systems and where where linkages are missing and even some ideas about how to connect. And, you know, the mapping is pretty straightforward. There's so much data out there to get started with. And then if the town actually had, you know, the where the trails are or could help map them, then it's, it's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the public input that Chad was talking about. Right. Um, yeah, I think I looked at the uh, list of projects that have been funded over the last couple of years by the state, and it had it had one or two similar, you know, okay. things to recreational uh, uh, opportunities. I mean, Vernon's been fortunate to get three municipal planning grants in the last five years, I believe, and it's very competitive, and I really don't know how competitive recreation is uh, statewide, um, but I think it's worth a shot at it. Um, and so it's sort of a segue to our next item, but I would say that Martin and Seth and whoever wants to, we could um, start drafting an application, wouldn't you, Martin? Yes, and just to note that the timeline is the um, application window opens on September 1st, and the deadline is November 1st at 6 p.m. So okay. uh, that gives us uh, actually two full months, so that, that's doable. So we would probably have a, uh, this be the focus of a, of a meeting. Uh, so um, <clears throat> let's go right into the next item, which Seth um, and I have participated in um, some webinars. Um, it's the Vermont Outdoor Recreation Grant pro Program, which is actually something I was not aware of and is quite significant. I did miss the seminar, was that yesterday? Um, Seth, did you do that one? I did not, but I got the impression from the first one that it was, it was more uh, of a repeat of the first one, right. just right. for and that's folks why that I, make I, it. I just had so much other stuff going on. You and I were in the first one, and right. I learned a lot from it. I did, um, but this is a significant program uh, that that these things we've been talking about all fit into that eligibility. So why don't we just kind of put this forward as a package for future you? You know, review. Yeah, and it's it seemed to make a lot of sense as far as um, they that these two would kind of work together. I mean, I would think that uh, a portion of our letter of interest uh, could include for the 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 actual for the recreational grant um, could include uh, plans for uh, a, a planning grant as well. Um, I mean, it seemed to me that the letter of the letter of interest uh, is really going to weed out. Um, you know, I guess it, there's, the letter of interest is extremely significant. A lot of times with grants and a letter of interest, it's kind of like, hey, just let us know that you're you're going to apply. And this one, it was more like, hey, your letter of interest better tell us why you think we should even look at your application or even consider funding you. 
Um, so it, the letter of interest in this case seemed to carry a great deal more significance than other grants I've been involved in. Yeah, I, I like it too because you don't waste your whole time on an application that they wouldn't have funded anyways. Yeah, agreed. So, and when is that due, that letter? I have not, I don't know if I have that with me. Um, I, I want to say the 27th, uh, maybe? No, I, I'd have to pull out my folder, too. Yeah. Right, is this something the rec department would take the lead on for that grant, Seth? I mean, I think that we would have to have a game plan as to how, that, how the monies would be used. Um, I mean, we're, it kind of happened kind of quick here. So as far as um, a, a budgetary process or a, a plan in place as to how we would like to use those monies, we're just not there yet. Um, right. You know, and, and I'm not hesitant to say that. Um, well, why don't why don't you and I regroup um, at least on the letter of, in, of interest? Sure, that those, sounds good. Those letter letters of interest are due August 27th. Yep. So I know uh, what's coming up. That gives you a little over two weeks. So, so I I would say you should just go ahead and do that. Yeah. Know? All right, Seth. Do you want to take the first stab at it? Sure. Well, let's. I mean, I think yeah. I think from what I'm hearing, it should probably come from the rec department. This request, or else the select board with the rec department. It's it's. I think it's more for those you your department than the planning commission. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree. Or I think a portion of the the letter of interest may have even touched base on um, different entities supporting. The project yeah. in town. Oh so, yeah, I think uh, yeah. I think they wanted some uh, let you to you know, list reporting our partner agencies. So. Yes. So Wendy, I'm sure Wendy would be helpful on this too. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's good at this too. All right. Well, so we have a couple state programs that could be used for recreation planning and actually implementation too. Let me just ask Bob just on the previous item. Um, uh, do we want to make a, um, a motion to begin work on this uh, FY 2022 municipal planning grant? Uh, yeah, let's let's do that. I, I would entertain a motion for the planning commission to prepare and submit an application for the FY 22 uh, municipal planning grant. I so move. Second. Is there a second? Okay, Maddie, thanks. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And we have five <laughs> members voting yes. Oh, uh, so motion carried. Thank you. By the way, I, I someone whispered in my ear that by next week we should uh, have a new uh, uh, town administrator. Uh, Hired. I don't know when they actually would start work, but we'll have somebody that can work with us on these applications. Yeah, and, and just so you know, I've I've asked Wendy, who will have a transitional period with that person, to in, include a planning commission um, coordination meeting before she leaves. She's agreed to that. All right, well, let's go on to the item I added, um, 7A, Berman Dam Relicensing. Um, the select board um, last meeting, Ed and I attended, had um, Kathy Erfler there from Connecticut River Conservancy, and Wendy had sent out a, a very nice packet of information about the existing license. Chad pointed out in our earlier tonight that there were a lot of, of um, recreation facilities proposed and seemingly committed to by that relicensing that never happened in Vernon. Um, and uh, the select board um, supports us working cooperatively to to submit comments, and I suggested that we have a a dam relicensing subcommittee, which would um, coordinate these comments. It involves rec department, it involves planning, it involves select board, um, involves listers, 
it's a pretty comprehensive um, opportunity here. Uh, and we have months to deal with this. This is like a never-ending bureaucratic process. So, um, but at least we're underway. So, I, I wondered if um, anyone, I would, I would be glad to, and I will volunteer to, to be on that relicensing subcommittee, and I wanted to invite anyone else from the planning commission, too, and then we would send a letter to the select board or an email saying who we want to participate. Then Wendy will coordinate it. We're talking about having some site visits, looking at the, the beach, dam, recreation area, um, the portage, the existing portage around the dam, the fish ladder, um, and then the proposals that were in the 1979 plan, um, which include, included campsites on Stebbins Island, a, uh, a Vernon Glen rec area. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. You all were copied on that from Wendy, so if you have some time, it's worth looking at. Um, so does anyone, if you want to be involved with this, with this committee, um, just let me know. Bob, I'd like to be a part of it. This is Chad. Great. You've already started work on it, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> kind of makes sense. So, but anyone could jump in and out at any time. So, but this is just to get it rolling. So, I don't think we need a vote on this. I'll just inform the select board that Chad and I, and others as they as they have time, will participate. Okay, any other comments on that item? Hey, Martin, did you get any letters or correspondence from Tim that we need to look at? I did not, no. Okay. And we don't need an executive session, obviously. Is there any new business? <clears throat> Our next meeting would be the regular planning commission meeting on Wednesday, September 8th at 6.30. So I take a motion to adjourn at 7.49. So moved. Seconded. Second for Maddie. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and thank you, Mark. And Seth and for participating tonight. Sure. Happy to. Okay, everyone, over now.